All right, so tomorrow I head off to a new country for me. And somewhere that I probably never would have thought I was going to be going just a few years ago. Really just continually broaden my perspective and see as much as I can in the world because I believe there's a lot of good in the world and there's a lot to uncover and enjoy in different cultures, especially ones as for example, an American might think would be really horrible and not a place you wanna go. So with that being said, tomorrow I'm actually leaving for Iraq. Now, I know that might come as a shock and it might sound a bit strange or you might be thinking, why in the hell would you ever go there? I get it. But I have a friend who I met traveling who literally has been to over 100 countries and has done an amazing job really opening the eyes of people to different places. She went to Iraq about, I think, two years ago now and she went when they first opened the visa application for tourists for our visa on arrival and she was one of the first tourists really there and she showed an entire different idea of the country than what you might expect and what we see, especially on American media. It's not, you know, all desert hole buildings and guns on the street and people trying to kill people. It's actually a beautiful country with really wonderful and nice, warm, welcoming, generous people. So I am really, really excited to go. I haven't told really anyone on social media. I told my mom this week she was not happy about it whatsoever and still is not. But I really just want to share this whole journey with you. So I'm going to be taking my camera with me. I'm going to be recording everything as much as I can and really just trying to give you another perspective on a country that you might not have ever thought was safe to visit. So I have so much to do still with work this week and packing and getting everything together and making sure I have a scarf to cover my hair and all my clothes cover my shoulders and my knees and my stomach and everything. And so lots to do still, but I am really excited to take you guys on the journey. So we're gonna go to Iraq and I cannot wait. And now I am off to Iraq. I literally, cannot believe that is my life and that I'm ever saying the sentence I am off to Iraq but I am so excited and I can't wait to take you guys with me so off to Istanbul first and a little bit later and then Iraq here we come Baghdad coming for you so at this point you probably think I'm absolutely crazy and my family thinks I'm crazy. They've told me I'm crazy. They hate the fact that I'm going here. But ever since I was younger, I've always had the desire to go places that other people didn't want to go. Like I want to go to North Korea and I want to see it. I want to go to these other countries like Iraq, I want to go to Iran, I want to go to all of them. And I want to see what it's actually like. What does day-to-day -day life look like? What is it like culturally? What are the people like? I wanna see how different life is besides what is portrayed on media, especially American media. They tell you everywhere in the world is so unsafe and not to go these places and travel. There's been a bunch of countries that don't like the government do not travel list and I've met the most amazing, sweetest local people. So I'm off on another journey to just show that, prove it and to feed my wanderlust. Like I don't have the, oh my God, I wanna go on vacation and just not work and like live this, you know, beach lifestyle. It's not why I love to travel. I love to travel because I have a deep love for new cultures and a deep like earning for going to new places, seeing new things and really just broadening my perspective as much as I can. So that is exactly what I'm doing on this trip. And I wanna broaden yours as well, everyone watching, that the places you see online might not be as scary or as bad as you may think. And yes, I do take things into consideration. I'm not naive. I've traveled enough now to know, you know, what is smart and what isn't. And I've done my research. So I know where I'm going and I know what it's currently like. And I think a lot of people don't. So I'm excited to show you, but boarding now and yeah, just excited. A couple more hours on there, but I'm literally gonna be 5 a.m. in Baghdad. So I'm excited. Well, we've made it to Iraq. I'm in Baghdad. I'm in freaking Baghdad waiting for a car to pick it up, but we made it, we're here in 
This is so surreal and weird. It's like 25 years backdated, but so freaking excited. Well, good morning from Iraq. We're in Baghdad. We're on a rooftop right now. We're gonna have a drink, go water, coke, and chill. But I'm so excited for this week to come. Exploring time, but yeah, I'm in Iraq. I am so freaking excited. It is hot as hell, but such a fun freaking week ahead. Can't wait to take you guys with me, but yeah, welcome to Baghdad. I was so excited for our first day in Baghdad, especially our first meal. Iraqi food is literally so delicious. It's full of meat, rice, and lots of salads. And afterwards, they even showed us how they make the fresh Iraqi bread in these ovens. It is literally to die for. The food was absolutely delicious. Bread was so fresh. And afterwards, we went outside and they gave us some chai tea which was amazing as well. But it was so cool just being able to walk around the streets of Baghdad, have a whole different view of this new country and some culture. And I don't know, it was just nothing like I expected it. But as you can see, it's no longer a war-torn area. We got to walk down Mutanabi Street, which you see here, and it's really nice. It has lights on the side. It's a market street at night, and it comes alive. And there were people everywhere. As you can see, the little kids were waving and smiling. Everyone wanted to say hi to us. There was gorgeous architecture all around, and just really got to enjoy a different side of Iraq that I never honestly imagined. Then we got to go into this tea shop. It is over 100 years old, and sadly, a car bomb went off outside of it back in the war and the owner of the shop's four sons were all killed which is obviously very tragic but there is so much history in this building and they serve a special lime tea here that was absolutely delicious i really enjoyed sitting around the energy inside the tea shop and enjoying the history from the pictures that were all over the walls from the years and years the shop has been open then afterwards we got to walk back down Muntanabi street at night as it got later it got more and more lively more stalls opened it is so hot during the daytime here that a lot of times the nighttime is when it comes live and then we got some really good fresh meat grilled dinner and it was a great end to the first day we finished day one in iraq we had a day in baghdad it didn't officially start the whole tour of our trip because today was like fly-in day but everyone ended up flying in super early in the morning because we kind of had a full day anyway so we bounced around a little bit went to a market street and people got some sim cards we went to some lunches did a little exploring so tomorrow we're gonna head to the ancient city of babylon i am so freaking excited but i have to say like iraq is really pleasantly surprising the people are so kind they are so nice and friendly and want selfies and want to give and have invited us to their homes and invited us to their free teas and all these things and it has just been absolutely incredible and i cannot wait to share more with you guys so tomorrow starts a real fun journey and i'll be taking you through everything but i have to say iraq you are really like opening my eyes to to a whole new outlook of the Middle East. And I think it should happen for other people too. But Iraqi people are honestly some of the nicest. So getting ready for bed. And then tomorrow is the real start of the tour. And I'm really excited to go see Babylon. So gotta go to sleep now because I'm absolutely wiped. I had three hours of sleep last night. So yeah, but first day in the books and absolutely amazing. Welcome to Babylon. I am so excited for this day. I didn't even know that the ancient city of Babylon was in Iraq. So right outside as you saw the blue gates, that is a replica gate of what the gate looked like. And inside you can see there's maps on the walls drawn where you can see what the actual sites would have looked like back in the day and where they would have been located. So we are now in the ancient city of Babylon. I'm gonna do a tour. Here's the little gates behind me, but the ancient city is actually built underneath of the new city of Babylon. So really excited to see it and get a little tour. That literally used to be a door where Seth entered. Most of it's underground. It's only a little bit we can actually see, which is crazy. 
Uh, this was the gate for the king and his wife. Most of Babylon was actually rebuilt. In the bottom half of the building, you can see the old original bricks. You can see this actual area is an original. This is where the actual entranceway was and where the gates first led. We were really lucky because our guide has lived there for generations, all of his family, and he got us a key into walking down to this area. I even got to hold a 2,600 year old brick absolutely incredible but we got to see the old bricks let's see how it was made and just explore this area even more even got to see the ancient lion of babylon this was actually found by local villagers on the year of 1776 in the ruins of the northern palace afterwards we got to explore and you can kind of walk up on a hill and you can actually see the ancient city from above and you can see how it's pretty much just like a maze it was an incredible incredible view and you get to understand how big this city actually was. So we are in Babylon and literally you can see the entire maze. Behind me, it's all underground. It is literally crazy. And then even over there on the hill is Saddam Hussein's palace. So I think we're gonna go there next, but Babylon's incredible. It's crazy how much is actually underneath the ground and you can't even see and what they've rebuilt and even some of the first like build of everything and the original materials is crazy. Welcome to Saddam Hussein's palace. How absolutely crazy is this? Only the first floor is open to public. We got secret access to the second floor and the rooftop. It is literally incredible. One of the bedrooms of Saddam Hussein's palace. I think it's literally gigantic. And look at these views. So incredible. Even in here is Saddam Hussein's bathtub. Ooh. <laughs> Master bathroom. <laughs> rooftop of the palace but there's some music going on I can't see your the end though let's see experience in Iraq has been incredible. The culture and history is more than we ever learn in America for sure. And the richness and people are just so, so good. But yeah, let's look at more Saddam Hussein's palace. As I said previously in the video, we got special access due to our really awesome guide. And we got to go on the second and third and rooftop floors of Saddam's palace. These bedrooms were so huge you can truly see how much money saddam hussein would have had with just the sheer size of these bedrooms the bathrooms the size of the palace and all the different intricate details from the ceiling work and everything that was done obviously after the fall the building was raided there's a lot of looting that happened and one of the only parts of the building that is still intact a lot are just the ceilings itself so as i walked in here you can actually see this beautiful painting on the ceiling, which was truly just magnificent to be able to see. And then in front of us behind the crowds was actually the throne where Saddam Hussein would have sat. It makes me think just how beautiful and intricate this palace would have been back in the day before it was raided and people stole things and looted. And then we got to see Saddam's pool outside and you could just see the sheer size of this palace. It was so big afterwards we headed off to the shop to go buy a bias for karbla the holy city in iraq we'd be fully covered only our face and hands not to be seen but in addition to our bias the shop owner actually gifted us all with beautiful scarves which was such a sweet gesture 
We got our abayas for Carbola tonight. We fully covered, so exciting. And now we got a free scarf from the shop man. So, so nice. Free scarves. All right, so day two recap of Iraq. Today was a full on day. We went to ancient city of Babylon, which was so cool. Didn't realize I was in Iraq. And then we went to Saddam Hussein's palace, which was magnificent. Like obviously he wasn't a wonderful person, but you could see how cool the palace was and see how beautiful and luxurious it would have been like pre fall and takeover. We would chill day tomorrow, but we had a full one from like 7 a.m. until midnight tonight. So I'm really excited to share more of my interactions with the Iraqi people soon, but it's been incredible. It's just been better every single day and I can't wait to see the rest of this trip, but first official day on the trip, fully finished. Mm -hmm.